Hello and welcome. My name is Yves Sanford and with me today is Sascha Sprung. So today we wanted to talk a bit about the new VMware by Broadcom service provider program, also known as a VCSP. So that's all we are going to cover today. And in today's video, we really want to take a bit of a time on what we, from our personal perspective, currently expect how the different tiers are going to work. We are not 100% sure if we are correct with everything, but as we had tons of questions from service providers all around the globe about how all of this relates to each other, we thought it makes sense to actually start with a little video and try to explain to you how our view on the things is. Um, this is dated based on February um, the 8th, and based on that, um, that all the information we have as of today. So Sasha, um, one thing which we have been covering in a lot of videos already is there will be something which is called the tier one service provider or pinnacle provider. Yes, so we have the tier one service provider. That are the service providers in the pinnacle status and they have the biggest commit. So they have to commit on the highest ratio of um, yeah, cores or money they have to spend each month, each year on the VMware by Broadcom VCSP program. And as we currently know, this actually this high spend is not only going to be for the next few months, that's going to be a commit, a commit for at least three years. So, but there is not only a high commit. So let's quickly discuss different topics around what's always important for the service providers. One of the changes which we heard already from Broadcom is they want to actually put sales around service providers foremost. So what are the advantages the Pinnacle um, or Tier 1 service providers get from a sales perspective? Yes, yeah, the Pinnacle partners as a service provider gets a PDM, PBM from VMware to, yeah, to support in the complete sales staff. They get leads from VMware. So that is, that is something which is completely new. So in the past, yes, there was some uh, way for service providers to potentially get some leads, but now it's actually in the program. It's described as part of the, um, of the documents that the Pinnacle service providers now finally will actually be directly involved in the VMware sales cycle and actually get leads out of that. But I mean, so I have a PDM, I have a PBM, I get leads. I, so I'm going to be included more in a co-sale fashion but also from a marketing perspective, because these customers need to know something about me, because otherwise um, it's always nice if I get introduced, but the question is, how does it look like from a marketing perspective? Yeah, I get marketing support from Podcom if I am a tier one Pinnacle partner. So that means I become, uh, I get a marketing manager so, so, so basically, so you get a marketing manager, that's one part out of it. But the other parts which you will also get is you will be actually invited to co-author blogs from what I read. Yes. And you will be invited to actually speak at events, which is also going to be important moving forward. So that's, at least it sounds like you get an advantage um, um, to speak at um, events like Explore or potentially regional events. Yeah. Okay, so another plus point which we can add to the um, to the tier one side, so you get blocks, um, you get events, and you get a marketing manager. But I think the marketing manager primarily, that's my understanding from the past, is typically there to help you how you spend the money. That's not going to be one dedicated just for you, but actually around all of that. Another topic which we need to cover, um, which is very dear to our heart because we have always been an education first company, is the topic of education. So one of the changes which we heard already from Broadcom is that a lot of the education might be included in certain partner or customer stages. Um, what we have seen here already is that there will be an online learning portal and stuff like that. So there will be on-demand training. So whenever you hear someone saying it's like you get free education and everything, from my perspective, that typically in many cases means you get on-demand trainings and things like that. We do not yet have full details about that, 
But that is going to help a lot of service providers because that ex actually in the past was a challenge. There is also a mention in some of the program documentations that there will be additional education funds for Pinnacle partners, which sound like that you get the advantage to actually attend in-person trainings or something like that. Or if that's for certification, there is not that much detail about it, but actually you get um, something more on top of it as a service provider from that perspective. So that all sounds pretty good for the service providers. And there is a lot of it. I mean, we have been working in the service provider for space for quite a while. There is a lot in there which has actually been a big complaint in the past from the service provider space. Another area which we always cover is support. So um, service provider support, when we look at it in general, typically means you only get level three, level four support in the first place as a service provider. It sounds like that has a new term. It's now called engineering support, for, um, uh, which is going to be available for Pinnacle partners. But there is one more thing which they actually dicked out for the, um, for the uh, Pinnacle partners, and that is that you get access to regional architectural resources and stuff like that. So it sounds like even though it's not really technical support per se, you actually get access um, to resources which are going to help you as a service provider to really design and architect your infrastructure and um, get a better usage out of it. So that basically means also not only the regional architects, there are certain other references towards local resources. So what a lot of service providers had in the past, like account managers and things like that, a lot of that seems to be focused completely on the um, tier one providers from that perspective. Um, how does all of this look um, in the future for the tier two service providers? Clearly, these tier two service providers have a lower commit to take. So this is basically, which is also referred to as the premier partner level. And that is basically going to be much more open from a service provider's perspective. So it's going to be um, much easier to access. The commit is lower. But it's still same story. You have a commit. It's going to be for three years. And as we mentioned in several other videos, there is going to be the challenge on how are you going to deal with it if your customers are going to jump off the contracts and do some all kinds of other things. Um, there seems to be some marketing available for these service providers. It sounds like more you might get funds. But it's not really 100% clear what they really get access um, from that perspective. But at least there is mentioning that they will get some marketing support. They will be referenced in the partner locator and a few other things. But you already see there is a huge difference here. The other thing which we, uh, when we look at um, the next level down the scenario, so all the things like on-demand training, that seems to be available um, including LMS, but no real mentioning of additional marketing uh, education funds or anything else. From a support perspective, in general, we have more or less the same L3, L4 support, but don't have an regional architect. So that means basically as the support already in the past, those of you who tried it in the past, you very often got something is like, did it ever work before? Nope. Okay. Then it's an implementation issue. So talk to professional services, talk to, a, to an architect, but it's not a support issue. Um, so that's going to be interesting moving forward for service providers. How are we going to deal with scenarios like that? I'm expecting also that a lot of the support which VMware provided in the past for free, and I know there was always a challenge for service provider, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, that you ended up in level one support. I think for some service providers it was a good thing, for some service providers it was a bad thing. But so now that we have more or less uh, these, these, these models set up, so this is basically how we operate. There is one important thing in the end, um, because VMware and Broadcom <laughs> wants to make money with this. Yeah. So we have the whole topic around usage reporting. So is anything changing here? Usage reporting, I think, goes further to VMware and Broadcom from that perspective. Yes. So tier one and tier two service provider have to report the usage to Broadcom 
That's new, not longer VRAM or flex model support. That's core based. We had a few videos about that and add-ons to the different yeah, core based bundles. For example, if you want to use firewalling, a site recovery manager, Tanzu mission control on-prem, there are a few add-ons you have to pay separate. But um, yeah, everything is core based or terabyte based on the amount of um, VSAN usage. Usage, so per core, there is add-ons we are going to cover. Um, but the other thing is also, beside all the financial reporting, um, is that um, you also will need to do end customer reporting. So this is where it gets a bit interesting and we will come back to that at a later point in time. So over here, same story. So there is no exception. Also tier one needs to report usage and they will need to report end customer information. So the last element in this whole game is actually from, from the baseline setup is what we call the aggregator. So the aggregators have been existing um, in the long run. Those who come more from the resale perspective, it's something similar to the distributor, but it's basically for the service providers. They also in the past have been doing business developments and other things. What exactly um, is going to happen there for them? It's unclear. But once usage and end customer data is reported, there is billing information which goes from VMware to the aggregators and then the aggregators are going to basically do the billing and in the end also the collection of the money. And then from there on the money would actually be moved back to VMware. Same story for the tier, tier one service providers. Also, it's bill and collect. Okay. And we currently don't know what are the additional tasks of the aggregators. So that is an open storyline. And um, as soon as we know more, we keep you posted. So we have the Tier one providers, we always have been talking about them for, for the last couple of weeks in the videos. We have talked about the tier two service providers, but we also several times mentioned that that's not it because this is not going to cover 4,000 service providers. So there is a lot of service providers left um, in this whole scenario. We mentioned already the term white label. Um, however, this is going to be called in the end. Let's call them tier three service providers for now. So what's going to happen for the tier three service provider? From a marketing perspective, you might get marketing together with your upstream provider, but there is really not that much from a marketing perspective. So, and in reality, a lot of that marketing is, is potentially not going to be helpful for you, but in the end, that's going to be um, an interesting scenario. Education. Um, per definition, how I would currently read the program, because you're not an employee of any one of these service providers, you will not get the education. So basically, education from that perspective is something where whoever you are going to actually buy the program for, they need to provide you with education services. Yes, that's right. And the important point here is tier three, you, get, you have to connect to either a tier one or a tier two provider to yeah, get your licenses, get your IT services from tier one or tier two um, to yeah, be part of this program, be part of or work longer or start as service provider with VMware. And the important part here is also is, is when you start, that's a lot of knowledge you need to build up. Um, but again, the big question is how things are going to work from that perspective. But at least you are going to be depending on these two because you also don't know what VMware by Broadcom is actually going to give you. And so you need to talk to your tier one or tier two, depending on who is responsible for you. And then you need to talk, can this tier one or tier two provider deliver education? 
because we don't think that VMware will provide open courses or classroom courses uh, for this tier three service providers. Okay. So let's think it's like I'm a tier three service provider. I have my infrastructure set up and up and running and I'm perfectly fine with how it works. I mean, I still have the challenge that I will need to migrate to VCF because that seems to be a high demand that um, there will be a timeline on how fast you need to move as a service provider. But so I need to figure out how I solve that from an education perspective. Or maybe I ask one of the other ones to help me with this or actually buy, go to someone like, like us from Comdivision and actually get architectural advisory. Yeah. So it's consulting for the implementation and everything else. What happens? If nothing happens, or not nothing happens, but nothing works nothing anymore. Works. So if I actually have to open a support ticket, how, how is that going so to look like? The problem is tier three service providers are not able to open a support case on VMware by Broadcom. Okay. Or it looks like. And that means if I as a tier three service provider have a problem and my infrastructure don't run, or I have a complete um, down scenario, so I have to call my tier one, tier two service provider, my white label service provider, and ask for support. But that also means I have my customers here. And if this customer have a problem in their environments, they call me as a tier three service provider. I have to open a support case on my white label service provider. And then normally, depending on the environment, but in, in a lot of cases, I need the end user, I need my support team, the tier one support team, and the Broadcom support team in a call. So that means I have my end customer, plus we have our tier three provider, plus tier one, plus VMware. On my support case. Yeah. Which latest at this point in time brings me potentially into a challenge because now I need to explain to my end customer why my larger upscale service provider is actually involved in my support case. That might work perfectly well in certain scenarios, but I'm also going to expect that because I heard already from people out there, it's like, yeah, yeah, we will just create proxy accounts for you. It's like if someone is already that clear with a model like tier one, tier two service providers, don't ex people expect that people are stupid they will actually figure out and that will clearly not be allowed to give the tier three service provider direct access to the support. So you have to go through the other ones. So that is going to be uh, one of the scenarios. But so that is only if something goes wrong. If everything goes perfectly well, um, we still have the scenario, how are we going to deal with the um, financial aspect out of it? Because the service provider still needs to do usage reporting cores, add-ons, and end customers. Yeah, so that means we have the usage report and the including the end customers. And we have to report it to our white label partner, tier one or tier two partner. So this basically means we are going to feed this into this or up there into the other one, and they actually take my information now and actually report that back to VMware. So that also means at any point in time, they see my end customer data. Yes. Um, and that's going to be um, an interesting scenario. I also, again, um, coming out of Europe, I already heard people is like, yeah, GDPR, this is not allowed whatsoever. Um, Trust me, there is a lot of other much larger software vendors out there who actually have gone through that it is, there seems to be a way to make this work. And don't believe anyone who is actually going to tell you it's not in there. If you just look at the FAQ document from Broadcom, it clearly says end customer reporting is demanded. So expect that you need to do that and expect that in that scenario, you have to report to your upstream tier one, tier two provider. And what we get from the service provider calls in the last days and weeks and months is, um, some perfect service providers say, I'm perfectly fine to report it to a friendly and, and well-known tier one or tier two service provider. We have a very good relationship, but we have a lot of service providers that I can never, I will never get my end customer data, end customer as a name and the usage of the end customer to any tier one or two, tier two service provider 
who is yeah working on the same market like me that is one thing out of it and what you always need to remember we are currently going through a phase of m a massively in this yeah. industry so your nice neighbor friend service provider which just sits around the corner and you have been working with for the last six twelve whatsoever maybe even years um they might be sold tomorrow to someone else and the next guy might actually not be that friendly. So whenever you think about white label, um, be sure that you really take very careful considerations. How am I going to get education in the future? How am I going to deal with support tickets? Because latest at that point in time, you cannot hide that you have another service provider involved in, to, in that anymore. And that most important part, you have to... Um, basically report your end customers via user report. Let me add one important part here on the uh, white label partner that I need as a tier three. So what we learned at the beginning, tier one and tier two partner only have layer three and four support by VMware. But what happens with the, let's say, easy support cases? If you start with tier three as a white label partner, as a white label service provider, what happens? So I'm not able to say, Hey, tier one partner, tier two partner, can you support me with that? What are the SLAs on this tier one and tier two partners for level one and level two support? Yeah. So we hope um, that this video actually brought you a lot of new information. You have a better understanding on how all the different um, uh, service providers actually uh, blend into each other, whether this is called white label or anything else. The important part is this is not just going to be just license resell because when you look through the documents, it clearly says there is a service which need to be um, provided to the tier three service provider. So there is going to be much more which is um, involved into that. Um, the other thing is uh, think about who are you are going to work with. And if you have any questions as we keep on um, saying all the time, don't be shy, ping us on social media. Um, write us an email, get in contact with us, and then we can discuss your specific case and how that actually, whether you are a fit for tier one, tier two. I mean, if you are a fit for tier one, you should know by now, but um, how you fit in between tier two, tier three, and then we can help you make a decision because time is running. Next week, you need to have your RFI reported to VMware. Thank you for watching and hope to see you again soon. See you. Bye-bye.